Hi, my name is Man of Codepix. I want to share with you computational photography, my thoughts over this topic today. I, um, as a just a simple background, it, when we use computational photography, I actually refer to um, things that we used to have, which is like um, the same process you got an iPhone. You can do, let me close, oops, wait. You can do a lot of um, fancy, uh, um, fancy things. You could do HDR, you could capture in night mode, very beautiful night scenery without having to um, try port anything, you know, our traditional legacy way, longer time exposure things like those and pose it, it would just take it as a snapshot and you got everything right instant in front of you um, we we did have been having since digital since we get got into digital from chem, uh, chemical processing from frame camera we if you recall uh, some older SDLR uh, like Canon has better S curve built in with um, a little more contrast and the color tone uh, a little warmer uh, a little more eye easing um, they call it Japanese color something last time um, then there are Leica camera and Fujitsu they all have some built in better instant JPEG level pose so you for street snapshot um, there were times that we we figured that that these cameras have better instant JPEG from when you capture um, a little more shadow, a little more uh, dynamic range. Uh, these are all digital processing. These are all uh, algorithms or computational. Anything that since we have digital capturing pixels is obviously we would use computer chips on board the camera or off board with a PC or even supercomputer to um, process those pixels and generate enhance um, whatever new results one of the biggest market obviously is the mobile phone market uh, which is not touched by traditional uh, camera makers like you know Canon, Nikon, Sony and the mobile phone market the factories, the manufacturers are always searching into putting um, multiple lens even though they are small onto mobile phone and um, on the SOC the chips they burn in now with new network chips and all these sort of things to make um, the the resulting photos much fancier than you possibly could do with a uh, camera with a large mirrorless camera at the spot of course you could do a lot of posts but um, that's not instant okay so this sharing that I want to share with you is about my thoughts over computational photography or CP and I am not giving myself answers uh, I'm always open-minded to new tools uh, I am actually raising more questions and I hope to share with you the questions and uh, lay a, a, a framework to understand this um, phenomenon as we move onwards um, as I try to think about this as a tool, I also think that uh, in in terms of just seeing the result, like a art piece of photo or whatever, without knowing what is made by human, a team of humans, or is generated by a uh, computer, a, an algorithm. Uh, it's the same as now you have 
text generated by like a, a story script generated by a neural network algorithm and you know so you you don't know so that that's a could be a virtual photographer now let me move on okay now if we see cp as a tool i um try to highlight a few observations first one is a uh, we call that one button effect is um, in in general human beings experience a process of doing something it's like step one step two step three so in your camera um, process you you think about your composition do all this and that and then pose and you know uh, lightroom whatever you, you may spend some time on it there are different steps you tune each step, you observe the result and tune again. It's very interactive, like the tool interact with you and you get feedback and so on. Um, with automation, uh, it's inevitable that we would program these steps into one button, meaning you start doing it all repetitively over time and you get tight. You have 10,000 similar jobs to do, so uh, let's automate it. So that would be one button. Like one button, you get all the HDR, uh, all the steps involved done. Is it could be done by the onboard chip of that phone, or it could be done by a post-processing process. And obviously, you you'll be using presets. I use presets too, and there are a lot of presets you could buy or you could download. Or you or this it comes with the uh, uh, photo processing software. That one button effect is, to a certain extent, uh, it, of course it is a convenience. It reduces your, your turnaround time on, on repetitive motion. You don't have to repeat a step, which you think you, you've done it already. So why you want to spend time again and again and again on the same procedure? And that's not creative, right? So the one button saves you trouble from that repetitive process. Um, then there's a Superman effect, which is the wow effect, like um, superhuman. Like normally you look at a, a veil, it's a thin uh, landscape, and it's like that. But with the um, with computational photography, you could do uh, fo uh, focus stacking, that you could have universal or infinite uh, depth of field. So a photo to you, a scene to you comes with uh, clear from front all the way to infinity. Uh, that's superhuman, right? And um, and then there are other superhuman things like at night time, even your eyes can't process all the all the um, nights and your phone can do it. And because they, they superimpose things and they take many shots and combine them and so on, um, computation, so. It's a lot. Uh, it does a lot more things than in that instant of time, like all compressed into a a snap, and that appears to you that is fast. It's just instant, but it's actually doing a lot of things behind. It's done like that. So, to human, it's like instant, but to the machine, if you drag it open and and unfold it, it's um. It's just like you. It's just like step by step. But it's just instant so it, it becomes to you a superman now that all um, ap apart from this normal algorithm procedure now uh, we um, we have a uh, neural network and the industry in the consumer market they always call it AI or something which basically refers to you train neural network uh, with a whole bunch of data uh, and then um, like, like you input a lock of train with a lock of uh, his, uh, photos from the same artist uh, historically and then when you input like in, in the case it's like a um, classified network then you input a a, a new um, new photo it could classify it as a uh, cat or as a dog or something you will train it to recognize a uh, cat and dog with a lock of similar cat and dog picture but that's the idea of neural network it's basically not intelligence in my opinion 
um, because to me intelligence the definition of intelligence has at least a property of being um, self aware and I don't think a neural network embedded uh, camera with eye auto tracking is self aware it doesn't it's not certainly it's not uh, conscious when there's no human being so um, the so-called AI today is more like perceived intelligence when human um, observe that and think that that it behaves similarly as as myself as yourself that it it is intelligent but it's actually not so that's a myth but marketing and people kind of think everything is AI but it's, it's in a sense it's a program it's a, a different kinds of algorithm um, that makes it appear to be uh, to be like uh, the the human behavior uh, you put it a name you give it a name as intelligent or not as human behavior being cast onto um, a, a machine process so when CP is a tool at least we have these three aspects of it which are, are dominating the market meaning they are the, the reason to use CP to many people so we buy iPhone or some uh, Android phone which claims to have those features then you will find that you use um, the you take pictures in, in that sense uh, you don't really need to go to power to uh, actually you don't you won't with the whole purpose of buying this phone is just to take uh, these photos without worrying about having to go to night room things like those night otherwise you might as well take a, uh, a regular camera right so that that's the idea so that that's as a tool so what's the um, again I'm not saying this is bad or, or, or good I, I'm not judging it I'm just trying to to see it as a different set is it like a, a new opportunity so it is it's a new tool it, it's like when we have um, a color pencil and um, colors and we d develop color ink things like this and develop paper then we start to draw so it's, it's better than engraving into stone right so <laughs> being able to draw on paper and and even to print uh, later on and that that's that's new tools um, new tools are uh, they giving us new dimensions of creativity yes obviously any new tools any new process will give us new um, ways to express ourselves uh, but there's a um, a an effect which I call it cognitive or cognition compression meaning as I said just now normally if you using an older way um, you, you you are involved human beings are involved in that that process more than with this one button effect now that you you are being ripped off you're being not ripped off you're being um, um, your that involvement are being taken out from that formula uh, in a sense you save your time but then you are not involved that's a, a piece of fact so being able to save your time meaning you don't need to worry about it that means you don't have that condition you no longer are aware of this and condition meaning you are interacting with your environment with your senses and then that process itself is a part of your memory and your experience then you don't have that experience and you essentially compress your your experience process into like that so you you are like it's over cross over and you might not be aware of anything involved so it's compressed space-time compression I'll get back to meta later now with that let, let's go back to the big picture earlier in a few videos ago I talked about my thought about the fundamentals of computing I'm uh, sorry <laughs> fundamentals of photography where uh, photographer uh, the elements of photography the people involved in particular uh, is not a technology picture is a photography picture so I I have to say the reason photography exists 
at least at the context of it is because of um, being able to capture moments and things like so capture reality reality with respect to uh, human reality uh, analog human not not the virtual human and on top there are acts right so there are artistic things involved and again art the existence of artists for humans if we don't have humans it's difficult to talk about art between a plant and a stone so um, we, we need human beings there that's the photographer audience maybe the subject um, those are the humans involved and there are properties like time recording instantness uh, there are different values uh, commercial values uh, mission call from God uh, different levels of transcend values in it and these values are self-awareness they have to be like love they have to be from human being right you can talk about love uh, uh, like embedded love in a Sony A1 camera <laughs> that would be ridiculous right the Sony A1 camera doesn't have love all right let's go back to this is um, about meta it's like um, it's not only about meta universe it's like we are talking about if we advance further we now we compress our condition so we lose our um, awareness of how a, an artwork a, that we like a photo in front of us how is it made how how or who is the author we we the effect of it is we we don't need to know if you look at twitter look at all this um click out 500 fakes um the so-called mass production of pictures photos because of smartphone proliferation much easier access to image generating devices not, not only capturing nowadays because of this computational photography it's not only capturing it's generating content so it in theory it, it could artificially generate abstract artwork kind of photos or even realistically realistically with more thing they could generate your pic your face your facial your portraits by using your your previous a, a whole lot of your previous portraits and would generate a new portraits of you if it so like you so that's not created by a f human photographer that's created by the machine itself out of previous experiences previous data and then the, the observer the audience they read those pictures and, and, and try to digest them would not need to know how it's made or it won't care because there are just so many of them think about how, how today if you spend more than three seconds on a Twitter photo or something that would be a success already it's so difficult to, to, to keep you stay on your eyeball stay on a particular photo for more than three seconds the reason for that is just supply and demand there's just too many of them and and there are um, too many of good photos uh, because they're machine generated they have algorithm to uh, at least hit that 80 90 percent mark that they generate IP sync photo and it's a uh, self um, reinforcing kind of formula uh, the more IP sync things they generate the more likely and the more hit and on the platform and then more um, advertising revenue sort of thing commercial value so this this is bound to be like that and that effect would dilute the well it's like just like you eat too much of the same thing then your taste bud and whatever your sense your human senses will get brunch a little and and you you lose your ability to tell um, not only not, not only to tell what's reality from from abstract arts but also you lose or you might lose your uh, appreciation of the art forms and further down is the meta world where um, in the future when you spend you have multiple virtual universe you in a day you spend 
uh, it's like, like just like the Matrix movie, you know, there you spend a lot of uh, different times in different matter universe, you got confused. And when you get back to your um, physical universe, you have a problem because your physical universe, the scenery out there, the landscape out there, even the human being faces, the portraits out there are very different from the worlds, the virtual worlds where these virtual artists are presenting to you. Uh, so the trees are not the same color, the, the faces are, are not the same, and obviously the virtual world might be a little better eye pleasing than the real world. And that distance um, uh, could become hard to resolve. Uh -huh. And then obviously you might want to stay in the virtual world much longer than you don't want to get back to your real world because of uh, it's much more pleasing there. Would that be a problem? I don't know. It's like you play too much games, online games or virtual games and and you lost your appetite, you lost everything, you lost your real sense. Um, you have to go back to that virtual world to get your sense back. Um, is that what we want? Is that how human civilization would move on? Um, is that how art uh, that comfort our soul would um, be like in, in the future? Um, so, to a little, I, I guess you see what I'm leading to, what my questions are. Um, as I said, I don't have answers. I would welcome your, you know, in the future when you have a time to, to listen to me, you might have similar thoughts and, or different thoughts and different questions you might share with me if YouTube still exists, but um, that would be fun. I mean, uh, every day is different. And by the time when we we encounter when when we talk about this top problem again, visit this problem again, um, we might have different tools. We might have different environment. We, we might be in a meta world talking about this again, uh, which <laughs> the camera and my and myself are then not real, not real in the physical sense. So yeah, um, it's an interesting world, and hope. Uh, we'll be seeing more uh, and hope that we could ask more questions about how we want our world to be and how we want ourselves to be and how we want our photographies to be. It's uh, on one hand happy, nice to have new tools and much better tools coming in and on the other hand we uh, might need to ask more questions about the fundamentals and um, after all we our technologies everything are progressing much faster than before but our physical physical body mental everything are not advancing that fast so it's inevitable that we have a gap we have a bigger and bigger gap and how do we consolidate this gap might be uh, a new room our mission for photographer, next generation photographer, to uh, manifest him, he or she himself herself on on uh, a um, virtual kind of computational photography. I will say virtual photography uh, in that sense. Many thanks for listening, and uh, see you again. Cheers.